let's see. So I'll go ahead and build my host. So we're going to go to a new virtual machine. New virtual machine. We're going to name this PC01. Store in default location. We're going to go generation 2. Startup memory. We're going to go with. Four gigs connection. We're gonna to go to our bridge to switch. Gonna create a virtual hard disk, and we're gonna make it 60 gigs. And on second thought, we're gonna make it 128 because I uh, want it to be. So what am I thinking here? I'm gonna have some data shares on it as well. Not that they're gonna get used, but you know we might. Um, still we can do our 2016. A thing with Hyper-V is any kind of a host OS licensing will power two virtual servers as well. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm just going to double check this real quick. 4 gigs of RAM, 1 virtual core should be fine for a Domain controller. We're also going to always start this because it's domain controller. We want it to always run. Uh, we're going to go ahead and connect and power it on. Install server 2016. I'm going to run through the setup here and I will get back to you guys. Uh, 16 standard desktop experience. Accept license terms, obviously. Custom install to our gig drive next and we'll install I'll get back with you once we are installed all right our domain controller has been built we're gonna go ahead and eh, we're gonna do the same thing with just with no password up oh, just kidding we're a domain controller so we need a password uh, so I'm just gonna create a generic password to use and we'll get set up um, we're gonna see what happens if I just send control delete and let's open task man or something. Perfect. Uh, from there, we can actually show our desktop and I'm just gonna close out of this session. It's full screen because it's messing with everything. I will connect again um, with a non full screen copy to hit control alt del. Uh, and this is the point where I will be. Uh, uh, I'll probably start working in remote desktop a little bit more uh, instead of directly onto these servers. Sometimes it's a lot easier to actually do configuration through remote desktop. Again, just makes it a little easier than on the, the server directly. Um, so I may start working in remote desktop here in a moment once I set a static IP address, change the host name of this server real quick. Um, so we should be in here very, very shortly. My first step is going to be changing the name, and then I'm going to reboot. Um, I'm also then going to install DNS service, and then reboot again. And then I will be installing uh, Active Directory Domain Services and DHCP. Let's see here. So we're going to name this DC01. And then we're going to go ahead and enable remote desktop settings. I'm just kidding. Here we are. Well, that's not quite where I wanted to go. Here we go. Perfect. Now, once we reboot, I should be able to RDP into DC01. If this will let me reboot right now while it's loading stuff. You can always reboot via command line with a shutdown, well, shutdown slash s, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a restart, which is gonna be slash r slash t0, and then I'm just gonna do a forced. Uh, I'm gonna anyways go ahead and set a static IP address on here. I'm gonna open up control panel. Um, Always, always, always have a static IP address on your domain controller. Um, same thing with pretty much any of your servers. It's just, just a good idea. Always, also, unless you really need it, disable IPv6. It makes makes some network 
uh, authentication things a lot easier. I'm going to go to 192.168.250.1 uh, is my subnet. So I'm going to go, um, I'm just going to put my server there. My um, gateway is 250.250. And I'm going to set up, as of right now, my primary DNS, when I set this up, needs to be 192.168.250.250. .250, and then we're going to do a secondary of uh, myself, so 127.0.0.1, which is loop back. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We should lose network access, and then we should regain network access here, which is perfect. And now we are going to install the DNS feature. So we're going to go to Tool Manage. Add remote roles and features next. We're going to install it here and to myself. Uh, this has a different one, so I'm going to actually go ahead and do a reboot real quick to try and pull that static IP address again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Server Manager. And we're going to go ahead and install DNS. Uh, so we're going to add roles and features, and we're going to install a DNS server. So I'll go ahead here, get this installed, and we'll go from there. Now, the reason why we're going to do it in this order, DNS and then Active Directory, uh, is that DNS needs to actually be set up and running before Active Directory can actually pull into that DNS server. Uh, you can do it at the same time, but it makes it just a little bit more complicated. It adds another couple steps. Uh, so this is the best way to do it. Uh, so I'm waiting for that feature to install, and I'll get back to you once it's done. Okay, so DNS installed successfully. I can now see it's a feature. Didn't prompt for a reboot, but I'm going to go ahead and reboot uh, just because. Uh, as of right now in the setting up process, I don't really care about my uh, my reasons for my reboots. It's obviously software or hardware configuration. Um, so I am not worried about setting those up correctly right now. Let's see here. I'm again going to have to do a control alt Dell task man, tools out of this virtual machine connect to it again um, because like I said again this uh, this guest virtual machine can be really finicky sometimes especially when you're already in uh, VMware which is why I would like to use remote desktop so as soon as we get Active Directory installed we should be good to use uh, RD let's see waiting on server manager we're gonna build our forest now so we're gonna go ahead manage add remove roles and features and we're going to add active directory once all this reloads should be good to go now add roles and features next 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 and active directory domain services and that's just about all we need here We're going to install the feature, we're going to have to reboot, I believe, and then we're going to configure the feature. Uh, we may not need to reboot prior to configuring the feature. So we'll let this run. Shouldn't take too terribly long. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start some Windows updates, uh, just because I'm not sure where this guy is at. I'm also going to do the same on my, my host. Um, let me go ahead and retry those updates. Let's see here. This might be taking a little longer than I anticipated, so I'll get back to you guys as soon as it's done. Well, it finished within a couple seconds of me ending that recording. I'm going to go ahead, we can click here, and it'll promote the server to a domain controller right here. We're going to uh, add a new forest, and our root domain name, we're going to do dt.local. Why not? Uh, it's going to be a local domain, so .local. 
Let's see, force functionality level, we don't really need to go down. We don't need backwards compatibility. Everything we have on this network is going to be 2016, 19, or uh, Windows 10. So I am not worried about that. I'm going to be a global catalog and a DNS server. Um, and we're going to have to create a password here. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Delegation DNS server, the third current zone cannot be found. Yeah, I ran into this guy before, but we can fix that in a bit. Let's see here. And then NetBIOS name is going to be DT. Uh, NetBIOS name is going to be the domain mm -hmm. minus the delegation. So we go ahead and go here, go ahead and click next. Yep, we're going to keep those sys files the same. New domain DGT local is also the new name of the new forest. Perfect, we should be fine like that. And password the administrator is just going to be the same as what we saw there. So I'm going to promote this guy to a domain controller and work from there. Maybe. Let's see here. All prerequisite checks have been gone through. Looks like we're installed and we're about to shut down. Um, and yep, there we go. So we're rebooting, should reboot, and we should then be a part of that new forest, that domain we created. So we'll we'll see here once this DC reboots. All right, so our DC has rebooted. It is actually I think the next day. Um, and I'm going to check our um, different errors we're seeing here. Uh, so I need to make sure our DC is integrating with our DNS. And it looks like we're good. So we can now see that we are a part of the DT domain with our Windows Server 2016. So I uh, don't have any issues with that. Our domain controller has now been built. Um, like always, I, I tend to like to pin administrative template items to, to the desktop. So I'm just going to open the file location. I'm going to grab um, users and computers, sites and services, computer management, Component services can be good, especially for DC sometimes for third party stuff. DNS, event viewer, group policy management, print management, resource monitor, services, server monitor, uh, Windows Server Backup, which actually we're not going to even be backing up this DC here. We're going to be backing it up through the host. Um, let's see. So I'm now working on a remote desktop just to uh, resolve the stupid. Uh, issues I've had here sending control dull so I'm I'm liking this better I'm gonna unpin that DC tab we know we're on the DC um, so now we're gonna look uh, at building some policies within this domain controller now I'll get back to you with some policies and other configuration for this DC we'll add some more features to it